Hey guys, Paul here once again with VHSCollector.com here to bring you another Blu-ray review. And today we are actually talking about two Blu-rays. It's the two volume set from Vinegar Syndrome called Five Films, Five Years. Now the first one is dedicated to the golden age of erotica, while the second one is horror and exploitation. Now, I was quite excited when they announced these because I just hate DVD. And I feel like if a movie is scanned in 2K or 4K, it should not be released on DVD. I mean, because, for instance, I feel like if I'm buying a DVD of a film that was scanned in 2K, I feel like I'm getting ripped off in a way. I know Vinegar Syndrome or anybody else isn't really intending things to be like that, but if there's more out there, more in the picture, I, I want it, <laughs> you know? I want everything, every detail that could be squeezed out of a print, I would prefer that than to have the DVD. And so, Vinegar Syndrome has to make a decision on whether they're going to put the movie on Blu-ray or DVD, and I guess they go on the internet or Google or IMDb and see if there's a lot of interest in the movie. But of course, a lot of these things are subjective, right? Just because not a lot of people talking about it on Google or IMDb doesn't mean that there's no interest in the movie or that the diehard fans of Vinegar Syndrome or that genre are not going to buy it. So I'm always disappointed when maybe one of their sleazy movies is announced and it's only coming out on DVD because I'm like, seriously? DVD? 2018 and we're still releasing movies on DVD? Um, again, like I said, I know it has to do with cost. It costs a lot more money to produce Blu-rays than DVDs, but I just feel like I'm getting kind of ripped off in a way. Again, they're not intending me to feel that way. It's personal. That's just my opinion and how I personally feel, but I don't know. That's just me anyway. So when they release these movies on DVD, I just avoid them. I just don't get them because for several reasons. One, as I mentioned, I feel like I'm not getting everything. I'm not getting the full resolution of the movie. It's kind of like buying a pizza pie and only getting seven slices. Um, that's just how I feel about it. Like on the back, they announced scanned in 2K on those DVDs. It's like, big deal. It's still on DVD. It's still standard definition 480p DVD. It doesn't matter if it was really scanned in 2K. Uh, maybe to some extent because they could fiddle around with um, the picture and they just have more leeway to repair the film even if it's standard def. But still, I want everything. That's just me. One of the other reasons is because I know as soon as I buy that DVD, somebody else is going to release it on uh, on Blu-ray, either another label in the U.S. after the license expires or somebody overseas, and I don't want to double dip. Like, seriously, nobody wants to do that. So that's why I try to avoid DVD. And I know there are some people that feel that way too, and... The last time I really criticized DVD, I got a lot of dislikes on the video. I think it was the Sleepaway Camp um, 2 and 3 review that I did on Blu-ray. Um, I just feel like DVD should be obsolete now. If you really want a DVD to watch movies in your car or on the airplane, just rip it or something. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science to do these things. I don't know. That's just my opinion anyway. Um, I love Vinegar Syndrome. I love their restorations. Um, they do a lot of archive work. They are an archive, essentially. They store a lot of prints on their premises. And I really respect what they're doing. The major pet peeve I have of theirs are their menus. <laughs> their menus are so boring. They lack any real effort. All the text is all in caps, and it's just a clip of the title card in the background on the menu. Now, of course, their priority is to film print. They want to restore it and put all their expenses into that, all their resources. Um, not really the menu design, but really it's not that hard to create a decent menu with the logo of the movie on there. Just my opinion, but otherwise I love them. I'm an annual subscriber, so of course I support everything that they do. Um, when they announced these, I was quite excited because now we're getting 10 films that were on cruddy DVDs on Blu-ray finally. Now of course there's going to be some compression, but it's still going to be a higher resolution than what was on the DVD, so I was quite excited. But when I got them and did a little bit of research on them, it was bittersweet, and I'll explain why. These films don't include any of the bonus features on the DVDs. This drives me nuts. Like, why would you not include those? And it's, there aren't many of them, but why would you not include them on here? Of course, um, I believe it has something to do with the space on here, and uh, the space on the discs anyway. Now, each disc in each set, there's two discs, obviously. They're both BD-50s. One disc has three movies, the other has two, right? I find it hard to believe that they couldn't transfer the features over to these. Now, the one that suffers the most is the Golden Age of Erotica. Now, the horror one is only missing one special feature other than all the trailers. Between the two of these, trailers are all gone. 
But from this, um, I, have, I had to write it down. So the Flesh and Bullets film is missing a VHS cut of the movie. Now, I should remind you guys, both discs are BD-50s. One isn't a 25 and the other is a 50. They're both BD-50s. So they both have the same amount of space on each disc. One disc has, of course, three movies. The other has two. If they put the, um, uh, what was it called, the Flesh and Bullets movie on the disc with just two movies, they could have fit a standard definition VHS print of the movie on there with it. So there, I feel like there's no excuse to not port that feature over. And of course all the trailers. The trailers are like what, two or three minutes long in standard def? And that's just this disc. You know what, let me get to the erotica disc because that's even a, <laughs> that suffered even a larger loss. A lot of these are missing features. Now, there's not a lot of academic work done on these type of films, these golden age of erotica films as they're labeled on here, which is unfortunate. I mean, these played a big role in the 70s and home video, of course. I'm always interested in hearing of the backstory behind a lot of these erotica films, porn films, whatever you want to call them. And so, I would love to see some interviews. I would love to hear any commentary tracks on these, but you know what? They're all gone from this. All of them are gone. So I'm just gonna go through this and tell you what's missing. So um, you've got Dixie Ray Hollywood star that is missing the R-rated cut of the movie. Uh, then you have, um, what is the next one? Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls is missing a producer interview. Now a lot of these interviews are only like 10 minutes long in standard def, right? So. Um, the third one is Ribald Tales of Canterbury. That is missing a commentary and an interview, I think I wrote on here. So, you know, that's a big loss because commentaries are awesome. There's so much there about the movie. And uh, the next film missing a feature is, was it Too Naughty to Say No? That's missing a commentary from director and producer. So. A lot is missing from this, unfortunately. So let's say I really enjoy one of these movies, or I find it really intriguing or interesting, and I want to learn more about it. Vinegar Syndrome expects me to double dip and buy the DVD to listen to the commentary track? That's not cool, guys. I don't really want to double dip. Now, I don't think Vinegar Syndrome is doing that on purpose or force us to double dip. We want the features. I guess there's a lot of interest in some of these. A lot of people have requested them, and they said, all right, let's just throw them all onto some discs, and, you know, maybe that'll suffice. But for me, it doesn't because you're separating the movie from <laughs> its story and, and essentially, right? So you're not getting everything. I want to listen to the commentary track to Too Naughty to Say No. You know, I want to hear about the production of the movie, how it was conceived. Of course, it's just erotica, but still, it's, you know, that's a choice for me to make whether I want to listen to it. Uh, or not so when you look at the run times people might say oh well maybe the the longer movies are on the disc with just two movies they really didn't do it that way when I look at the run times and everything and the run times are when you average them out they're all about 90 minutes so it's not a dramatic difference anyway so that's really disappointing with these I think it's a cool idea to have these right definitely but if the features have already been produced for the DVD carry them over they're not taking up a lot of real estate on the discs this is just constructive criticism, of course. I'm not vilifying Vinegar Syndrome. I love them. I love their work. I think they do some great stuff, and I hope that maybe if they do these again, that they could just port over the features. And there's no way to fix this unless you do standalone releases of some of the movies on here. But by that point, who's going to really buy them if they already have the DVD or they have this? Really, it's like the damage has been done. <laughs> it can't be repaired. People aren't going to double dip or triple dip. So... Now another thing worth mentioning about these releases is that each disc doesn't mention what movie's on it, right? How am I supposed to know which movie is on which disc? Now first I thought, well, maybe they go into the go in the order that they're listed on the back and the front. Wrong. They don't. So um, that's just annoying. So if I wanted to watch one of these particular movies on here, I'd have to, you know, take a gamble. Disc one, disc two. Um, so. Uh, that just boggles the mind. They, they could have easily put on the back disc one, these movies, disc two, these movies, but um, they didn't do that. A lot of people might be interested in how these films look now that they're transferred to HD finally. And they do look better than I imagine the DVD would look, right? Because now we have them in a higher resolution. Some people might argue that some of these were shot in 16, so they're not looking that much better, I guess, than the DVD, but 
for me, that's really subjective, right? I mean, if you go on the Blu-ray.com forums, you'll see exactly how subjective that is. People will go on and on arguing whether a DVD looks better than the Blu-ray or vice versa. It's just, uh, it's just incredible. But um, as for me, as a collector, I just I feel more comfortable knowing that I have the film in a higher resolution. That even if there is no additional detail there, it's, it's just peace of mind knowing that. I have a version of the film that will look as best as it could look, especially from Vinegar Syndrome because they do some great work. Now they didn't do a lot of extensive um, restoration to the film prints. I'm sure they did. The, they worked on color and everything, but you know some of the films like The Mothers has some print damage to it. But of course that's like a really grindhousey film, so um, I could live with that. That's fine. I don't expect them to restore every film, and even if they don't, there's always potential. In the future because they have the 2k or 4k scan to work from so so yeah definitely so like i said i did watch all these but i did watch clips throughout them and of course vinegar syndrome does a great job thanks for watching this has been paul look out for more blu-ray reviews for sure vhs reviews i will see you guys next time thanks